Okay, this is problem number one for the practice problem number one for lesson one. And this problem says that you have a rectangle A that measures 12 centimeters by three centimeters. So the length is 12 centimeters and the width is three centimeters. And rectangle B is a scaled copy of rectangle A. And so select all of these that can be true. All of these were the measurement pairs that could be the dimensions of rectangle B for scaled copies. So first of all, notice that um, you can multiply the length and the width by the same factor to get these values. If you can do that, then it's a scaled copy. Because that's what a scaled copy means. You can multiply each length by the same factor. Also, there's a relationship within each rectangle in that the length is four times longer than the width. So the width is three centimeters, four times three is 12, that's the length. So we can look for that relationship also. Okay, so for the first one, for example, um, six centimeters length and one and a half centimeters is the width. Well, one half of 12 is six and one half of three is one and a half. So the scale factor would be one and a half to go to A. And so this is true. And notice that the length, six units, is four times the width. So four times one and a half does in fact equal six. That's not true for B. There isn't a single factor that you can multiply 12 to get to 10 and three to get to two. So two is three halves, is two thirds, sorry, of three. So two thirds times three is two, but two thirds times 12 is actually nine, not 10. Uh, two thirds times 12 is actually eight, not 10. Because two, one third of 12, 12 divided by um, three is four, two times four is eight. So two thirds of 12 is eight. And also four times the width does not equal this length. Four times two is that eight, not 10. So this one doesn't work. This one, there's not a single scale factor that takes 12 to 13 and three to four. Four is four thirds of three, but 15 is four thirds of 12. Four thirds of 12, 12 divided by three is four, no, 16. 16 is four thirds of 12. So 12 divided by three is four and you add an, another four to 12, you get 16 not 13. And so also notice that the length is not four times longer than the width. Four times four is that 16, not 13. So C doesn't work. D does work. So um, four and a half, three times four and a half, and it's a little bit hard to figure out that scale factor. It's actually four and a half to three, which is, a bit hard I have to think about that one. Four and a half to three is the same as nine to six. So nine to six is um, three halves actually. Yeah, that makes sense. So four and a half is one half of three longer than three. So three halves times three is equal to four and a half. Yeah, that makes sense. And so three halves times 12 equals 18. Well, what's half of 12 is six, and three of those halves, three times six equals 18. And notice also that the, this length is four times this width. Four times four and a half does equal 18. Four times four is 16. Four times one half is two. 16 plus two is that 18. And finally, um, a length of 80 and a length of 20. Um, uh, 20 thirds. So um, 20 is 20 thirds of 3. 20 divided by 3 times 3 is equal to 20. So 20 thirds. A little bit hard to, to calculate that in my head but it's easier to look at that 80 is four times 
So the length is 4 times the width. So 4 times 20 is 80. So 4 times 20 is 80. So this one does work as well. I have to think about the scale factor a bit more. Work it out, simplify it. But that's okay. That's why you can look at it a couple of different ways. Okay, the longer side is four times the shorter side. From seventh grade, actually, that is called the constant of proportionality. That does not change. It's the ratio of two lengths within the, the rectangle, those, the ratio of those same two corresponding sides for scaled copies is always the same. This is where we used this equation last year, y equals kx. In this case, k, this value for k is 4. So 12 is equal to 4 times 3. So look for this relationship up here, and you can figure out which are scaled copies of the other. Okay, that's problem number one. This is practice problem two from lesson one. So you have three rectangles. One rectangle is A, which has a length of 12 units and a width of 8 units. Rectangle B has a length of 15 units and a width of 10 units. And rectangle C has a length of 30 units and a width of 15 units. And then it asks you to answer these questions. Um, is rectangle A a scaled copy of rectangle B? So is A a scaled copy of B? So you're going from B to A. So to do that, you take the ratio of the corresponding sides, that's the scale factor. So the corresponding sides are 8 of the widths, in this case, are, are 8 and 10. So 10 times 8 tenths, that ratio 8 tenths is the scale factor, and 8 tenths simplifies to 4 fifths. So each of these lengths is 4 fifths of its corresponding length. So 4 fifths of 10, 10 divided by 5 is 2. Um, 2 times 4 is 8, and 4 fifths of 15, 15 divided by um, 5 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12. So, so this copy A is 4 fifths of B, each length. Another way to look at that is the ratio of the corresponding sides within a rectangle. So the ratio of the um, width to the length is actually two-thirds. 8 and 12, that ratio is two-thirds, and 10 to 15, that ratio is two-thirds. Because um, 12 divided by 3 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 15 divided by 3 is 5, 2 times 5 is 10. So 10 is two-thirds of 15, 8 is two-thirds of 12. So then it says, is um, rectangle B a scale copy of rectangle A? So now going from A to B. Well, that has to always be true. If A is a scale copy of B, then B has to be a scale copy of A. And the scale factor is the reciprocal. So now to go from um, B to A, is rectangle B a scale copy of A? Now to go from A to B, it's 5 fourths rather than 4 fifths. So 5 fourths of 8 is 10. So you take 8 divided by 4, that's 2. 5 times 2 is 10. And 5 fourths of 12 is 15. 15, I'm sorry, 12 divided by 4 is 2. 5 fourths. 12 divided by 4 is 3, sorry. And 3 times 5 is 15. And also those ratios, we, d we looked at the ratios of the corresponding lengths within each rectangle, and that's the same, 2 thirds. Explain how you know that rectangle C is not a scale copy of B. We well, can take either one of these, but if you look at B, if these two are scale copies and C is not a scale copy, it's not going to be a scale copy of either one of them. But to this, the factor to go from 15 to 30 is 2. But 2 times 10 is 20, not 15. So C is not a scale of copy. And also, if you look at the ratio, it says is rectangle A a scale copy of rectangle C. Well, that can't be true either. Um, if these two are scale copies of each other, this rectangle C cannot be a scale copy of either one of them. 
It's not a scaled copy of one of them. It's not a scaled copy of the other one. But you can look at the ratio of the width to the length, and that is one half or two, if you want to look at it that way. So 30 to 15 is two, but 15 to 10 is three halves. 12 to eight is three halves. So 30 to two is two times the length, but 15 is three halves the length of 10, and 12 is three halves the length of eight. So just one example here, three halves of eight. Um, take eight divided by two, that's four. Three of those halves, three times four is 12. So A and B are scaled copies of each other, C is not. And I'm doing it a couple of different ways. One is looking for a scale factor between them, and the other is looking at the ratio of corresponding sides within the rectangles. That's the constant, that's the um, constant proportionality as we talked about a moment ago, that will always be the same. We're actually gonna use that ratio later on in this unit. Let's get problem number two. This is practice problem number three. So you have three polygons and you're supposed to scale each one of these polygons according to the directions. So I'm gonna go over each one of these. I'm gonna zoom in to each one of these. The first one, take this polygon and draw a scaled copy of this polygon with a scale factor of one half. Well, this is the original, the blue triangle is the original one. So one half of this length is this length right here, going from this point to this point. That's half the length. And this length right here, half of this length along the base is, right, is this point right here. So this is half the length. So this is half, this is half, and so you connect them, this is going to be half of this length out here because these are going to be similar triangles. They have to just share two congruent angles to be similar. They share this 90 degree angle right here. It looks like 90 degrees. And this angle here is translated down here. And this angle here is translated over here. So this triangle is a scaled copy of the larger triangle. And the scale factor has to be one half because this length right here is one half of the original length. So every length has to be one half the original length. And you also see that if it's scaled one half the size, so the area is one fourth, one half this way, one half this way, one half of one half is one fourth. So the area will be one fourth. So you get four of these triangles inside the larger triangle. So this is scaled by one half number. Actually, all these numbered triangles are one half the scale of the original triangle. Next one, this polygon quadrilateral is supposed to scale up by us with a scale factor of two. I found this hard to do. Um, the best way that I found to do it was double this length. So each length is gonna be increased by a factor of two. So it's each length is gonna be doubled. So double this length and then double this length. And then what I did is I made a copy of this length and moved it out here. So this is the same length, I just translated it out here, and then I doubled it. So this length has been doubled, and I did the same thing here. I just made a copy of this length, so I did this all in doceric, made a copy of this, and I translated it over here, and then I doubled it, and it should complete the polygon, and it does. But because these angles are odd to work with, it was hard for me to scale up just by a simple factor of two. So I chose to double each side independently and basically put them together. The last one, this is a scale factor of one fourth. So I took this side and I took half of it, that's that blue point right there. And then I took the remaining length and I took half of that. So that is one fourth, one half of one half Sorry, one half of one half is one fourth. So this length is one fourth the length of the original. Did the same thing on this side. This length is one fourth of the original. And then I just connected them out here. I kept the angles the same. So this angle is the same as this angle. This angle here is the same as this angle. And they share this angle. So this last angle also has to be congruent with this angle. So if you just draw this out and connect them, 
this is a parallelogram. So a parallelogram is, has two copies, two pairs of parallel sides. So this side and equal sides. This side is parallel with this side and equal to it. This side is parallel with this side and equal to it. So a parallelogram, actually this is, uh, looks like it's a, actually a rhombus, which is a parallelogram that has four equal sides. All right, problem number four. Which of these sets of angles could be the three angles of a triangle? Well, the angles of a triangle have to add to 180 degrees. The simple way to do this is just add them all up, and the one that adds to 180 degrees is the answer, and that is B. The other ones do not add to 180 degrees. They cannot go together to make a triangle. So the sum of the angles of a triangle equals 180 degrees. And problem number five, in the picture, um, lines A, B, and C, D are parallel. These, so these two lines are parallel, and they have a transversal. So this line that tra traverses across these two parallel lines. And when you see that, um, the way to think about it is you're going to have to deal with alternate interior angles, vertical angles, supplementary angles. So all of those kinds of angles that we studied in unit one come back to you. So find the measure of the following angles, explain your reasoning. So angle B, C, D, angle B, C, D. That is an alternate interior angle of, of angle A, B, C. So if you took this angle and you rotated it 180 degrees, so just turn it around, it will land right here. It's a congruent angle. It's just going through a rotation, a rigid transformation called a rotation. So it's going to be the same size. It lands right here. This is called an alternate interior angle. So this angle will always be congruent with this angle. So angle ECF. So ECF. Well, once this angle is 38 degrees, this angle has to be 38 degrees because it is a vertical angle. So if you go across the intersection, those angles will always be equal. So this is 38 degrees, and this is 38 degrees. And finally, angle DCF, so DCF. Well, this falls on a straight line, so this angle here has to add to 180 degrees with the 38 degrees. So these two angles are supplementary angles. They have to add to 180 degrees, so this angle has to be 142 degrees. And notice that this vertical angle is right here. That is also 142 degrees. But 142 degrees plus 38 degrees equals that total of 180 degrees. And remember, that's a half a circle around, and it forms a straight line. So this side of the angle opens up all the way around to form a straight line. It goes 180 degrees around.